Welcome to the Eastern European Investment by the crew Mitch Schaefer, Kim Nesper, Marta Tosic, Jeremy Godsey, Stephen Fasek, Abraham Aljuani, and Bethany Montgomery. So basically the background of UXI Corporation involved that the corporation uh, had holdings in chemical pollution control, pulp and paper, and frozen food industries. And then the president notified us that they wanted to invest in opportunities um, in one country of Eastern Europe and it would be for the next three years. Then the president also, um, they decided to withdraw their future meetings so that way the, the workforce of the team could collaborate on their own without any presidential involvement. And uh, the president did express interest in their countries of uh, Romania, eastern portion of Germany, Hungary, Poland, Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, Bulgaria, Albania, Czech Republic, and Slovakia. Here again is just a, a map of the countries that we were asked by the president to study. Here we can see the history and timeline of the three countries that we were looking to invest internationally. Um, the history and timeline starts from 680 all the way to 2000 when the countries joined the EU. Okay, now we're going to take a quick look at the history between the three countries that we narrow down for the top or from the list. First off will be Slovenia. The ancestors of the Slavins settled in the area about 680. They fell to the Franks in 788 and then to the Dukes of Bavaria in 843 and after that to the Habsburgs. In 1918, after the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Slovenia joins the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, later known as Yugoslavia. During the World War II, they were divided between Nazi Germany and Italy. At the end of the war, in 1945, became a constituent republic of the socialist Yugoslavia. Slovenia was the first to declare independence from Yugoslavia in 1991, and in 1992 joined the EU recognized as independence. Excuse me, in 2004 joined the EU and NATO. Uses euro as its currency. So for the second uh, country we're going to look at in this history is Czech, Czech Republic. Was Slavic's part of the Great Moverian Empire until 906 when Czech became part of the Frankish Empire. Czechs were once the 10th industrial power in the world. Reunited by the Allies in 1918 with Slavics, part of the Soviet Union after World War II, which was between 1945 and 1989, split from the Slavics in 1993, joined NATO in 1999, became part of the EU in 2004, and also Czechia, is officially confirmed as an alternative short English name for the country. And the currency they currently utilize is Czech Corona. Our next country of interest was Croatia, and their history involves starting with the 17th century, where they actually came and settled into their present territory. In 803, they became part of the Roman Empire and were joined by the Ottoman Empire, Austrian Habsburgs, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1918, they voted to join the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, which was later known as Yugoslavia. And then they were invaded in 1941 by Nazi Germany and tried to create a Catholic all croat Republic. And then after World War II, they became part of the communist Tito's Yugoslavia. In 1991, they declared their independence, but then they had a civil war until 1995. And they joined NATO in 2009 and joined the EU in 2013. And there currency is Croatian Kuna. So here we have a chart to take a little closer look at the top three countries, which was Croatia, Czech Republic, and Slovenia. And on the left here, you'll see all our criteria that we utilize to um, take a little closer look at. So first off, it is important to take a look at the government type. Um, it is important to know what type of government that you are going to be contending with um, when opening up a new business inside these countries and in, in Europe. So with that, the L3 countries were the same. They have a par parliamentary republic. Um, the risk rating for all three of the countries were a B. So the risk um, of doing business in that country is, is great. Government effectiveness, um, 0.51 for Croatia, 
0.96 for Czech Republic and 0.92 for Slovenia. The economic freedom score, which is out of 100, uh, 59.4 for Croatia, 73.3 for Czech Republic, and 59.2 for Slovenia. Um, the overall infrastructure for uh, Croatia was 4.6, Czech Republic was 4.9, and Slovenia was 4.8. The quality of electric electricity supply, which is 5.6 for Croatia, 6.4 for Czech Republic, and 6.1 for Slovenia. The business environment for Croatia was 3.65, Czech Republic was 4.4, and for Slovenia, it was 4.03. Ease of doing business out of 100 for Croatia was 72.9. Czech Republic was 76.71. And Slovenia was 76.14. To look quickly into their financial services, all three countries do have a strong uh, financial service sector. So um, these were uh, great options for um, moving forward with our business. So when we kind of got closer to evaluating the countries, uh, we, we evaluated the pros and cons. So for Czech Republic, we saw that they had strong government and infrastructure. However, they're landlocked, so you kind of have to resolve to your natural resources uh, in the ground. So you, they have coal, timber, and other minerals. And then also for businesses, uh, it actually we saw that it takes a significantly longer time to actually start up a business if they were to decide to go there. Then when we look at Slovenia, we saw that they also had a strong government and infrastructure. They also had a better rating of ease of doing business. Their natural resources were forest, lead, building stone, and hydropower. Uh, unlike Czech Republic, they are not landlocked. So they have access to water and resources with water. But they also had a poor economic freedom and a and like we said, they have a um, they are not landlocked, so they also have access to that small coastline there. And we, when we came to Croatia, we saw that this was the best in, uh, investment opportunity. They have a large coastline that's over 1,777 kilometers long, and they have over 1,000 islands and islets that offer uh, 4,000 4, more kilometers of coastline. They have a large sea surface. Um, their ratings for financial services and business startup time was pretty good. They had decent infrastructure, and when you count in the coastline, that's even better infrastructure and port resources. And their natural resources are oil, iron, salt, and also obviously hydropower and whatever's in the sea too. And then we did see that they had a questionable government support. So the Croatian government uh, uh, originally was part of this uh, socialist Yugoslavia. In 1990 marked the first multi-party election. Uh, re they rejected the communist system in uh, December of 1990. Uh, after that, they became li the liberal democratic. Um, from then, uh, 1998 to 2013, new amendments to the Constitution reduced presidential power. So now we'll take a look at the benefits uh, to expatriate uh, Croatian business owners. Even if you are not an EU citizen, you will attain residency in Croatia. You will be eligible for a business bank account um, as soon as you arrive. Easily uh, access uh, all rights of Croatian companies. Um, eligible to become a property owner in Croatia. The government does not screen or discriminate against foreign investment. And the average applied tariff rate is 1.3%. So as we're looking further um, at what type of business we w wanted to go into um, internationally in, in Croatia, we wanted to look at the overview of the Croatian fisheries and aquaculture sector. Coastal areas have perfect conditions for aquacult aqu aquaculture uh, development. In 2015, the total number of aquaculture uh, production centers was 420, including both marine and fresh waters. Croatia pioneered commercial marine aquaculture uh, with one of the first and largest hatcheries for European sea bass in the early 1980s. The most important speci species are the sea bass, sea bream, and Atlantic bluefin tuna. Important products are canned fish, small oil fish, large uh, 
um, fish, dried salted fish fillets, uh, mostly from sea bass and sea bream, also well as from small pelagic, which included sardines and anchovies, and frozen fish, uh, shellfish. Uh, well, certain things that we were wanted to be aware of in, uh, in Croatia was the law requires all businesses to have an accountant. So government communications, tax, PDV, and salary commu uh, calculations. Payment to accountant usually is 400 to 1500 kuna a month, which is 64 to $240 uh, US dollars. The PDV system, uh, the Croatian value added tax system, which is 25% added to all items sold. Um, the register with the PDV system is uh, the businesses refunded all PDV payments. Changing a business address, uh, pick location carefully. Uh, relocation costs 2,000 to 400 kuna, which is $319 up to $639 US. Some things for investors to be aware of when uh, choosing to invest in Croatia would be rules of law and tax burden. So starting with rules of law, there were conflicting claims in some title cases. Then you also have uh, judicial independence is generally more respected than judicial reliance. And then uh, receiving lo uh, they also received low scores in the Economist Intelligence Unit uh, 2015 Democracy Index, which um, indicated popular dissatisfaction with corruption. And then moving on to the tax burden, we found that top personal income tax rate is a whopping 40%, and the top corporate tax rate is just under 20 percent. So it's a few other things that we wanted to look at with Croatia that we found that was interesting. Uh, the freedom of doing business in Croatia compared to the world um, currently is mostly unfree. Um, but as you can see in the graph that um, from it looked like 2007, um, it, the freedom goes up and then kind of tapers off around 2011. And as it starts to dwindle down, current uh, time frame, so we're below the world and business freedom, but uh, still, even though it's right at the cusp of uh, mostly unfree, uh, going into moderately free. Um, looking at freedom of trade, uh, Croatia is well above the world, um, over 90%, and has been that way uh, since 2007 or longer uh, compared to what I'm seeing on the graph. Um, Freedom, our investment freedom, uh, looks like they've continued an upward trend and has uh, slightly um, leveled off here, but they are uh, mostly free um, in investment. And then property rights, as we can see, uh, they were below the world expectations uh, for the longest time and now has peaked uh, for uh, rights with property um, current year. Ultimately, our team decided to um, expand into the seafood industry, uh, particularly the frozen seafood industry for transportation purposes. This would involve crustaceans, shellfish, mollusks, etc. And to do that, you need a new production facility to take full advantage of the Adriatic Sea and also to package and uh, ship properly. And we decided to sell locally, export to neighboring countries and the EU. Um, which use local distributors and consume supermarkets, which are really popular over there. And that is our presentation. We hope you enjoyed our uh, insightful investment opportunity. And if you'd like to look at the further slides, there's more history about the other countries of Eastern Europe.